We have reached a fork in the road for the Ubuntu 1504 Vivid Verve. This is likely the last release that will use the LXDE desktop. The Ubuntu team have been working on porting over to the new LXQT desktop. At this point LXQT is not really ready for production, however you can install it through the Ubuntu development repository and I've included install instructions in the description. If you're brave enough that is. Now like all the other 1504 releases, Lubuntu have moved from Upstart to System D. Now for home users this, sh this shouldn't really be an issue, but for business users, well it's a different story, because for one thing log files are stored in binary format. A PC Man FM file manager has been improved and I've not really been able to trip it up, so it's an excellent progress on there. If you've ever looked at my previous Lubuntu reviews, you'll notice I have complained a little bit about PC Man FM, but this time, not at all. So what will LXQT give us? Well it's a little bit faster than LXDE, although at this point in development I notice the speed goes up and down a bit like a roller coaster. The memory usage has increased slightly, but really from a user's perspective it's difficult to tell and I think that is actually an excellent point. They have moved from a legacy GTK base to a QT base, but kept it feeling the same. On their website they make a point that Google Trending for GTK is fading away, whereas it's a lot higher and steadier for Qt. From a programmer's perspective I believe that Qt is more of a favourable base compared to GTK. But I'll start a review in LXD and show you a little bit of LXQt. The layout of the desktop is fairly traditional. You've got your application menu on the bottom left hand side, you've got shortcuts for a few applications, you've got desktop switcher, then on the right hand side you've got volume control, network menu, the keyboard selector is still in the wrong language, which is weird because when you log in you can choose ENGB and I have a British keyboard here. I don't know. Whatever, that bug's been around for a while. Time, date and calendar. Then we've got a shutdown menu. There's a few things you can do on the customization. So we've got changing the appearance here, putting icons on the desktop. I like to have a clean desktop, so no icons for me. Then the preferences, you can customise look and feel. Choose from a few different widget styles, different colour schemes, different icon themes, mouse cursors, changing the window border, you can change the order of the icons so you can have close, minimise and maximise on the left hand side instead of the right hand side. The font comes pre-enabled with anti-aliasing and does look perfectly fine. So just because it's lightweight doesn't mean it's stuck firm and rigid. You do get an aero snap effect. Now I'm sorry in my previous videos that I never spotted this because I've always aimed for dragging the windows to the left left or right hand side or top and basically nothing works like that but it turns out if you hold down the windows or super key press the arrow keys then it does work. You do have a snap effect of sorts however it doesn't resize the windows back down so it's there, but it's not as good as the more bulkier desktops such as GNOME, KDE or Unity desktops. The applications you get here are more lightweight. So on the Office applications we've got Abbey Word and Genumeric instead of LibreOffice. They do work, maybe not as good as LibreOffice. You get Firefox via web browser, other more lightweight variants of the accessory applications. So it's good for older systems. The PC Man FM file manager is a bit more improved now. Do get some good functionality here, we've got the tabs, yeah. But anyway, the real issues I had on it were on the network side. If I go to the network, using the SMB or Samba network. Wow, this makes a change actually getting the option of connecting anonymously or as a user. Most file managers fail to recognise this because I do have anonymous user access on my NAS as read only, but uh, I can type username in here. So I can open up videos on here, although I haven't installed the codex device and actually know that's not going to work. I don't have VLC installed this time around. Now let's take a look at the LXQT variant of this desktop. So you've got the fairly familiar view here of the application menu in the bottom left hand side. Although this time we've got a desktop switcher next to it. You've got your shortcuts for applications. Then on the bottom right hand side we have the incorrect keyboard selector. A shortcut to any mounted drives, time and calendar. All very familiar so far. Opening up applications, yeah that's like the same. 
speed of application opening kind of goes up and down a bit, I noticed. Oh, by the way, I customise these application icons because normally they're on the right hand side, but I move them to the left hand side because it is quite a flexible desktop system. There's a new application here called the Q-Terminal drop-down. Rather an amusing bug with this, if you press F12, it goes away. If you press F12 again, it comes back. But do it a few times and you'll notice that these tilts start appearing. <laughs> Where are they coming from? Anyway, other than that, not really any other problems with it. It's functional. Let's go across to the preferences. So this menu here, the LXQT settings, now you've got the options for these individual preferences here, or you could go across to the system settings. So let's go into appearance. If you've used a KDE desktop, you'll start seeing some similarities here. So we go across to the theme. Got a few different themes to choose from here. Now I believe Numix might have had a hand in some of these. I did notice their name across a couple of times. But uh, let's go down to the KDE Plasma. <laughs> Say that background looks familiar. <laughs> Is that the Plasma 5 desktop by any chance? And look, some of the layout here really does look familiar. That's the light desktop and the Lubuntu one, so really similar to how Lubuntu actually was. Should we go for KDE Plasma? Anyway, looking at the font, no issues here. We have the anti-aliasing and font hinting. They all come out rendered perfectly fine. Got the cursor changes, but that's similar to before. Notifications, you can change the position of the notification on the screen. Hmm. Funny, this is more customizable than Ubuntu here. Yeah, nothing special here, you'll notice these as being similar to before. So, can we change the wheel scroll size? Oh look, we can! Oh, sorry, I'm really poking fun at Ubuntu again. This is so much more customizable. And it's in development. I thought Network Manager wasn't working then, but I noticed a menu has appeared there on the bottom right hand side. So can we change anything here? You know, how am I meant to set the IP settings? Okay, could be a question that one, but look, I'm in a development system, so I'm not going to complain too much about it. So yeah, all this is fairly familiar. Look, we have shortcuts to the Lubuntu Software Center from here. And even got a shortcut to Snaptic. Now, I did notice this tripped up a little bit. Um, if I put it in again, let's see if it does it a second time. Basically, if I put the password in here, and it comes up with a dialog box again, and then it says we've authorization has failed for some reason, and it's closed. <laughs> it's not, it's open. Look, again, not complaining, just pointing these things out. You can drag applications down for shortcuts, so let's take a uh, calculator, why not? So just drag it down to the bottom of the screen, and plus, and you see it enables a little shortcut there. PC Man FM, why not? We'll chuck that down there as well. So, how responsive is this? Interesting, I can't open it. Oh, <laughs> thank you for opening five of them up at once. <laughs> Interesting layout, well done there. It kind of lags a little bit. Sometimes it's responsive. Sometimes it's not. Look, it opened up instantly that time. You might notice the icons look a bit familiar to the KDE Oxygen theme. So here's what I thought of Lubuntu 1504. Well, it's lightweight and fairly customizable, and certainly a lot more customizable than Ubuntu is. And it's good to see that PC Man FM is improved. And you also have the option to sample LXQT, should you want to. You've got a neutral point here that System D has replaced Upstart, and on the downside, this is a really tiny little one, but the minor issue of keyboard selector still shows the wrong language. I don't know if it's just me, but it's been going a long time that has. But overall, I have given this distro 80%. Looking back, I gave Lubuntu 1504 85%. Now the reason for this decrease is purely that the support time is lower in this release. So thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.